Hi, I'm Phil Dooley and today we're going to be talking about the things that make up fusion plasmas. That's lots of charged particles. So I've got some example charged particles here and uh, we're going to look at what they do in electric fields and magnetic fields. So we have this great little piece of apparatus which can uh, rotate round and round and give us the real feeling of magnetic and electric fields. So if we uh, put our charged particle here and then apply an electric field, that's by tilting the table, then it'll roll obviously down the hill as if there's a negative charge over here. I do it that way, it's like there's a negative charge there or, or a positive charge on this side. So try and keep it constrained inside the circle by rolling it down the hill. Quite tricky to do, especially if it's moving fast to begin with. If we then add a magnetic field, things get a bit more complicated. And a magnetic field on this table is like this thing rotating round and round. So if I put the ball there rotating, so it pretty much stays in, in place. As soon as I tilt it, it goes sideways. It doesn't do what we expect at all. So there's always a right angle involved with charged particles inside a magnetic field. Unfortunately our plasma just ejected this particle. What we do in a plasma where there's hot particles flying in all directions is we then apply a magnetic field. So if we have a particle that's traveling along and then a magnetic field appears then the particle starts to follow the magnetic field in those little circles like we saw on the table. And that's a great way for us then to keep the particles inside the plasma so they don't all fly apart and smash into the sides of the vessel. Of course, that's all very well. When we get to the end of the rod, it'll just disappear off again. Well, what we need to do is make a magnetic field line without any end. The way you do that is bend it round on itself like that. So now, our particle is going to spiral along the line, sort of like that, sort of like that, and you see what I mean? Got it? We're going to have a look at what happens with two particles. So now I have two particles, and we're going to uh, pop these and see what complex interactions they have. So they're both doing little circles. Let's give it a tilt and see what happens. That's not actually touching. They're just going round and round each other. The exact starting positions of the balls determine where they'll end up. You can calculate whether they'll eventually get flung off the table or bump into each other. And in the same way, the path of a plasma particle in JET's magnetic field can be calculated. But in JET, there are lots of particles, not just one or two, so it's a challenge. Someone who does this kind of calculation is Tormas Koskala, a Finnish PhD student at JET who studies computer models of plasma particles. Hello, Tomas. Hello, Phil. I hear you're doing a PhD in particle orbits. That's right. So uh, we've been talking about orbits today. I brought one with me. Can you show us some real ones? Sure. Let's sit down and have a look. So we've been talking about the, the perfect uh, torus donut shape of our orbits. Well, that's not actually correct, yeah. because what, what happens if you make a magnetic field like this is that your particles begin to drift and mm -hmm. ions and electrons, so opposite charges will drift in opposite directions right. and it will create an electric field. That sounds bad. That will destroy your confinement. Right. So actually what you need to do is you need to connect the top and the bottom with the magnetic field by, uh -huh. by twisting it around. Oh, okay. So you give it a... Yes, yeah, we can give it a try. Okay, I'll, I'll be the, You'll be the third the, line. So the, yeah, the and then, then you would twist the magnetic field around like this. Right, and then put that into a, a, a toroidal yeah, then, then, oh, yeah, 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 then connect it, to, shape, connect it back to itself. So that's kind of... Okay, show us what a real one looks like. Well, I can show you some calculations. Uh -huh. uh, 
So what we usually do when, when we are calculating orbits, we're not interested in the fast gyro motion. Okay. So we average yeah. it out and just follow mm -hmm. the center of gyration. Mm -hmm. And we are here we now have a red particle that is ah, yeah. following the field line, more or less. Yeah. And it's on a field line that does two oh, toroidal okay. rotations for yeah. each poloidal rotation. So All you right. can follow it here. This is a cross section of the machine. Uh -huh. So you can see that it's doing a nice circle okay. here. Yeah. And here you see that it does one rotation close to the center, then it mm -hmm. does one cl rotation close to the edge, mm. and then goes back again. Right. And it really zooms around the outside too. Yeah. It goes very fast. Is, is that real? When it moves to a stronger magnetic field, the direction of the velocity changes. So it will, the gyro motion will speed up, and the motion along the magnetic field that we're actually looking at here will oh. slow down. OK, so hold on, show me that since we've got our demo here. Okay, so, so what it means is that if, if you were moving along a constant magnetic field like this, yeah. you would keep your velocity, but now if, if the magnetic field is increasing towards mm -hmm. you, okay. so you will Increasing slow fields. down along the magnetic ah, field, but rotate, but rotate faster. But got rotate the same faster. Of kinetic energy. Yeah. yeah. And what can happen actually is that if it doesn't have enough velocity in the direction of the magnetic field, it can stop and bounce back. Right, so yeah. slow moving ones actually bounce. Yeah. Yeah, so these, these are what, the, what are called trapped orbits. So if you, if you look at it in the cross section first, so it mm -hmm. tries to move towards the s stronger field, yep, it slows I down, see. it bounces back, Never it makes tries it into again, the high field area. and bounces back again. And because it's drifting down slowly all the time, it yeah. makes this orbit that looks like a banana. So we call them banana orbits. Really? Yes. <laughs> okay. It really does look like a banana. Have you got any other fruit and vegetables <laughs> that you can show us? Yeah. Then there's one that is called potato orbit. Really? Yeah. So, so potato is actually just a really wide banana orbit. <laughs> when, the, when the drift motion becomes large enough, yeah. the, it will move the particle around before it reaches the bouncing yeah. point. Oh, I see. And what will happen is, is you get an orbit that's called potato that is trapped to the low field but doesn't actually uh -huh. bounce back and forth. And th but that's just a small sample of all the number of orbits you could possibly have. Yeah, you have so many, many more. It must, more be, messy must be hell ones. to try and model that. I mean, there are 10 to the 22 particles inside JET. Well, we only take a small sample. We take mm -hmm. 10 to 100,000 particles, and mm -hmm. that's usually enough to represent the whole population. So the computers can manage 100,000 particles. Okay. Yes, easily. Ah, OK. And, and what do you get out of that? Well, we usually use the code for modeling neutral beam ions. Mm -hmm. And what we get from there is the we get the heating power deposition to the main mm -hmm. plasma, and we get the fusion reaction rates between right. the fast ions and the thermal ions. So you actually can calculate how many fusion reactions are going to happen? Yes. So are we going to get power out of fusion? Of course we are. Ah, that's good to hear. <laughs> Thanks for your time today. Thank you. See you later.